you have not been to a place like Leith before. You hadn't been to a state like North Dakota before. You know, is there something that you want us to know about a place like this that you know now that you didn't know when you were when you went out there? Kind of naively, I'm going to guess. You went out, you had your cameras, and you thought, this is a great story, we're going to follow it. What do you know now about that kind of place that you didn't know before? I mean, I think something, you know, I mean, I think just like you, we were, uh, you know, almost sort of surprised that Cobb was met with that much resistance. I mean, he was going to a town that was primarily almost 100% white. There was one black man that lived there. Um, but the people really wanted to stand up and not let him take over. But I think that a lot of that had to do more with sort of his means of trying to take over the town instead of his sort of set of beliefs. And I think that's something that we learned. And I think that, you know, someone that says it has a very small role in the film is that gentleman, Kenneth Zimmerman, who's who's in the, in the engine of the car, um, where he sort of speaks this truth that it seems like a lot of North Dakotans sort of hold, you know, dear. It's just that, you know, as long as he's not really bothering anyone else, he can kind of believe what he wants to believe. Um, and I think that that's, I think that's true in, in these, a lot of these small towns is, is, I mean, there's a reason that a lot of these people are living there. And I think they want to sort of be left alone and sort of have, you know, have their land and have their family and, and you know, you sort of live and let live kind of, kind of mentality. So I think that when Cobb came in, it wasn't, he wasn't automatically going to be driven out until things started, you know, got bombastic and, and threatening. I wonder if the people of the town had thought about it this way. I couldn't help think, especially when he mentions Asperger's syndrome, that these people are coming to town, they're mentally ill. For, forget whatever their beliefs are. Let's say instead of racism, it was that um, they're spacemen or whatever, and they're mentally ill. And I wonder how the response would have been different. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, that's a great um, observation. Even when we were at Sundance, we had a, someone asked us quite hostily if we would have made the film if it were, uh, you know, black nationalist or a Muslim trying to take over the community. And then our answer was absolutely we would have still made the same film and covered both sides because, you know, we were very interested in communities and communities facing um, kind of uh, things that they wouldn't have not faced. Prior. Yeah, external forces. External yeah. forces type of, yeah. Well, it's interesting because in, in a lot of ways, these people are mentally ill. When you look at their beliefs, even just when they're, in my, my conversation with Craig this afternoon, I hung up the phone really thinking this is a man who is sick in the head. And in some ways, I came away terrified, but also a little bit empathetic because I couldn't help but think if this was a person who was in a mental institution that I would take their beliefs with a grain of salt because their brain wasn't working correctly and I and I would handle it differently. I like what I was saying and maybe naively so. What if the townspeople had said um, we are not going to react? Like because obviously a person like this, the question is why would he allow you to, to film him the way you did? And the obvious answer is because he's an egomaniac and he likes the attention. What if he doesn't get the attention? What if you handle everything he's done through just legal means, let lawyers and policemen handle it, and you never engage? Does he go away? What do you What do you think? Or yeah. does he keep provoking it until something really horrible happens? Yeah, I mean, I think it became this sort of escalation in Cobb's uh, instance. He wanted more and more people to know what he was doing to get sort of off the white supremacist message boards and sort of like have a much broader reach and have more people sort of hear his call, whereas the people in the town also felt like they were being left alone. They felt like, uh, you know, no one was really taking them seriously. Why didn't they just dissolve the town? Um, so they were hoping that by participating uh, in a film that a lot more people would hear their story and would, would sort of come there. So there became this sort of motivation, I think, on both sides to have media attention and to have people s sort of come in and document uh, what was happening. So I think that, you know, by Cobb's, Cobb's behavior, he was sort of deliberately doing things that the media would cover.